Hi everyone, welcome to Bodzu Bodze. Mero naam Itishagiri. As you can probably tell, Brikuti is not here with me today. She is on her post wedding vacation, and we at Bodzu Bodze send our beloved Bodze. And her beloved Satish, immense joy and good wishes. Since we released our last episode, "Are You from Mongolia?" A lot of our listeners reached out to us or commented on our social media platforms about how they found the episode really relatable. This made us curious. We wanted to know how the episode was relatable exactly. So we reached out to some of our listeners to see if they might want to share their own experiences. And we'd like to thank everyone who sent us their recordings. Thank you for lending us your voice and your memories. We're gonna get to that soon. But before, just a small note on male entitlement. Kate Mann, the Australian philosopher, is the author of the book entitled "How Male Privilege Hurts Women." In this book, Mann uses. The framework of male entitlement, whereby women are expected to, I quote, give feminine goods, sex, care, nurturing, and reproductive labor, while not taking away any masculine goods, power, authority, and claims to knowledge. Entitlement to sex means men believe that girls and women should make their bodies available to them, give them sex. And the same mindset has given rise to rape culture that, according to Mann, is rife with this thing called empathy. Mann defines empathy as the sympathy extended to a male perpetrator rather than to his female victims, because empathy projects them as good guys. Now, let's place Paul Shaw in this picture. There are ongoing protests in his support on the streets. His peers are slut shaming, victim blaming. Op-ed pieces are being written by senior advocates, arguing that the age of consent in Nepal is actually a trap for young men, a trap where their futures will be compromised if young girls charge them with rape. This lawyer argues that the physical makeup of Nepali girls is such that they are mature enough at the age of 16, and therefore the legal age of consent in Nepal is irrelevant. I am not making this up. So the most frightening thing about all of this is that the girls, the women, are nowhere in the picture. They are now physical bodies, and the men are arguing: Should we have access to her body when she's sixteen, or should we claim her body when she's eighteen? How easily they have co-opted the idea of consent to serve their needs, their entitlement to sex. When men want sex, age of consent is relative. How pervasive is this belief of entitlement? The belief among Nepali men that a woman's body or a girl's body should always be available to them, irrespective of age, irrespective of their emotional well-being, irrespective of their mental health. For them, consent is not an explicit and continuous affirmation; it is affirmation perceived, coerced, even engineered. When it comes to serving the man's need to have ownership over a woman's body, over a girl's body, his entitlement is supported by making consent relative, by creating confusion, distraction, by attacking the young girl, a minor, for having allegedly consented, for having allegedly accepted his entitlement, his advances, his predatory behavior. The fact that she's a minor, that she's not mature enough to give consent, does not matter. Here, the girl, the minor, needs no protection because, in the eyes of the man, the predator, she's mature enough to give him what he feels he's entitled to. To him, she is quote an adult, a consenting quote woman, not a girl, an all-knowing, all-grown-up woman, because that is what he needs her to be. That is what the society needs her to be to allow for male entitlement and male preying to continue. Now let's extend the same idea to other laws that have been proposed in Nepal, but to rather protect women. These are protectionist laws proposed, actioned, sanctioned, tabled 
to protect the dignity of Nepali women, their well-being. Minors in the eye of law require protection because they're young. Beyond their immediate family, the state is supposed to be their guardian. And for that reason, we have laws, we have age of consent. But adults do not need the same protection. Of course, unless you are a Nepali woman. In 2012, Nepal banned women under 30 from working in Gulf countries. Introduced as a measure to protect women from being trafficked, from being abused, exploited. In the eyes of the state, Nepali adult women, in this instance, were treated as minors or girls who did not have the power, the consciousness, the ability um, to protect themselves. They were helpless, weak, and so an intervention was needed. When they tried to introduce the law that would require women under 40 to seek permission from their family and their ward office to travel abroad last year, women would have needed to acquire consent from others. Consent was to be granted by our family and the ward office. It was never ours to begin with. Or now, a subcommittee in the parliament has been discussing a new law, a law that if passed will criminalize living in together relationships, because if not... According to experts such as Mohan Lalacharya, a lawyer, men will pursue extramarital affairs, begin illicit relationships with women, victimize these women without their consent. And of course, by criminalizing such kind of relationships, consent is granted by the state. The state gets to decide who is good enough to live together outside of marriage. Or are you even allowed to live together outside of marriage? Because, you know, if women are not protected by this institution called marriage, then they will be just helpless against the sexual advances of men who probably are already married and have a different family. Here again, women are treated as minors in the eye of law. But the actual minors, actual girls um, who are underage, who are raped, sexually abused by predatory men, were supposedly in consenting relationships, according to these men. Why? Because it suits their needs. It enables them to have access to their bodies. So let's think about this. What is consent then, really? Who gives consent? Is it ours to give? And the eyes of the Nepali state, the Nepali society, Nepali men, when are we girls and when are we women? Hi, Bozu uh, I recently listened to your episode called uh, Are You From Mongolia? Uh, I wanted to share my own experience. यो ठ्याक्कै त्यो एपिसोड सुन्दाखेरि भिकुटीले आफ्नो एक्सपिरियन्स जुन चाहिँ सुनाएको छ नि सो मेरो पनि एकदमै सिमिलर छ त्यस्तो होइन इट्स सो सिमिलर आई कुडन्ट लाइक हुन्छ नि बिलिभ इट सो म म पनि आई थिङ्क आई एम अराउन्ड द सेम एज एज भिकुटी सो आई जोइन द न्यू स्कुल होइन काठमाडौँमा इन द फिफ्थ ग्रेड है अनि म चाहिँ त्यो क्लासको ओन्ली जनजाति होइन अनि सो जोइन गरेँ अनि आई थिङ्क इट वाज दी सेकेन्ड अर द थर्ड डे देस दिस ब्राह्मीण गाई होइन उसले मलाई के भन्यो भने जस्ट आउट अफ द ब्लु होइन तिमीहरू त गनाउने भोटे हो तिमीहरूले त गनाउने नुन हालेको चिया खान्छ भनेर भन्यो कि नाउ दैट आई थिंक अबाउट इट अहिले पछि चाहिँ सोच्दाखेरि चाहिँ के लायो भने मलाई दिस गाई प्रोबली वेन्ट होम टु हिज प्यारेन्ट्स होइन फर्स्ट डेमा अब सबैजना भेट्यो नयाँ स्टुडेन्टहरू भेट्यो यू वेन्ट होम यू टोल्ड हिज प्यारेन्ट्स दैट देर इज अ न्यू तामाङ बोय इन क्लास एन्ड उसको प्यारेन्ट्सले यसो भन भनेर सिकायो होला कि या सो दिस वज लाइक दि फर्स्ट फर्स्ट कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेसन दैट आई फेस फेस्ड है Uh, yeah it's it's sad that we were just like 10 years old you know ani tei school ma koso ekchuti feri nepali subject teacher le pani etikai huncha ni all of a sudden ke tyo yo bisay ma kurai gari rathiye na haina all of a sudden 
तामाङ हरु त तल्लो जातको मान्छे हो नि भनेर फ्रन्ट अफ द होल क्लास के यतिकै भन्दा के मलाई हैन थिंकिंग ब्याक हैन अहिले सोच्दा खेरि चाहिँ आई थिंक आई गट लाइक लेसर ग्रेड्स देन आई कुड ह्याभ गट हैन जस्ट बिकज अफ माइ लास्ट नेम हैन दे इभन मेस्ड अफ माइ डेट अफ बर्थ त्यो एसएलसी गर्दा खेरि हैन सो त्यो पछि मैले चेन्ज गर्न ट्राइ गरेको थिए एकदमै गाह्रो भयो हैन चेन्ज भएन एक्चुअली या सो स्कुलमा त धेरै कुरा छ यस्तै कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेसनको हैन अर्को कुरा द्याट आई फेस एभ्री नाउ एन्ड देन इज वेन पिपल एस मी वेर आई एम फ्रम है आई मिन इट्स ओके इट्स दि नेपाली वे अफ सोसियलाइजिङ है तपाईँ कहाँको हो भनेर सोध्छ म यहाँको हो भनेर भन्ने बट वेन आई टेल दम द्याट आई एम फ्रम काठमाडौँ देन देर इज दिस सक के दिस इज डिसबिलिफ कसरी हुन्छ हाउ इज ही फ्रम काठमाडौँ ही इज अ तामाङ बोय जस्तो कि होइन अनि आई एफ नोटिस द्याट हाम्रो यो सो कल्ड कास्ट हायरार्कीमा होइन दि हायर दे आर इन द्याट हायरार्की द मोर अनकम्फर्टेबल दे आर विथ मी बिइङ रेस्ड इन काठमाडौँ This is Suvi. As a child, I was the only Tawang kid besides my cousin in school and uh there were not a lot of other Janjati kids in the school as well. Uh I don't think, you know, like the middle school students knew much about religion and all, but with the little information they had, they once asked me to convert into a Hindu person. Uh, the conversation literally went like this. Suvi, I think you should convert into a Hindu so we can all be best friends who are Hindus. <laughs> this is such a strange encounter when I look back. Uh I think, you know, the media especially plays a huge role in all these things. There is so much talk going on about Asian representation in western media when i didn't see a single person who looked like me unless much later uh and even when i started seeing some representation it was a stereotypical side character who was only there for laughs and jokes which was obviously not funny finally when there is a little representation there is actually a lot of fetishization and sexualization too the festivals of indigenous people are just an exotic treat to the eyes of many and that's so disappointing we should do better these media should do better in a point in the podcast uh, you mentioned about an article that said quote on quote mongolian looks are trendy because of the popularity of Korean series or East Asian features and somehow uh, we represent these features. This is so sickening but also says a lot about Nepali media as a whole. I just want to know what goes on the minds of the people who write about it or who make stories about these stuffs. Mm. I think something wrong something's wrong with them. I know something's wrong with them. So while talking about this, let's talk about how they lump the whole list of diverse ethnic groups of Nepal under Mongolian looks, quote on quote. Uh what is Mongolian looks and who gets to decide what a Nepali person looks like? Uh, I find it hypocritical how they are the same people who talk about diversity in Nepal but refuse to acknowledge the uniqueness of indigenous communities as a whole. I knew and celebrated the festivals and cultures of all my friends or most of my friends but they knew nothing about mine and they never actually showed interest in learning. some of my culture and it took me some time to comprehend you know religion and culture as a child too i would ask my friends what year they were born in and the animal associated with that year 
and they would give me weird look because I always told them I was a sheep or a goat. So I was so excited regarding these stuffs when I first learned about it. And all this excitement faded away when uh, some guy said, Hey, you're a goat. You're not a goat. You're not a goat. You're not a goat. I was so hurt even though I didn't even know what Bode meant that time but he said it with such spite that I knew it had to mean something bad. Uh, I don't know who teaches kids this stuff but it had stayed with me after all these years even as an 18 year old now. Uh, I think my experience is added a lot to a weaker self confidence in my preteen and years and my self image was very bad since i didn't see anyone in media who looked like me i assumed that i looked strange and not in a good way i felt a lot uglier and the portrayal of nepali beauty even today is very unlike me be it in songs, stories, or movies, and the vastness of ideal Nepali look and what I look like is obviously very used, right? So, yeah, this was addressed in Bozu Waze and I'm so glad it was. By listening to the podcast, uh, it makes me go, oh wow, I'm not the only person who experienced this or who still feels like that. And I'm really thankful that you guys exist. Uh, and to anyone else who can relate to the podcast and this episode specifically, I hope you know that you are pretty inside and out. And you don't need to be self your self-worth and what, are, what other people's definition of beauty is. Uh, I guess let us all be the representation we never had while growing up. Thank you. Hi, Bozu Bozai. My name is Sujana Sunwar. I recently listened to the episode, Are You From Mongolia? And wanted to share my own experiences. To be honest, I found that entire episode very relatable. But what really provoked my thought the most was we are solely judged on how we look and placed into this one big it's not even big to be honest one small category of mongolian and that's it that's the only acknowledgement we get from our society and to be honest it's pretty heartbreaking so this is more like something that happens to me or like a question that has followed me around ever since i was a child Whenever I introduce myself to other people, they're like, what is Sunuar? And I explain to them that Sunuar is Kirat. Um, we belong to the Kirat group and then we are kind of like Rise and Limbus, but we do things a bit different way and they have their own way of doing things. And although we do celebrate the same festivals, we do it quite differently. We have different norms and different cultural dresses and jewelry and all that and even after hearing all that people have the audacity to dismiss me and be like e, rai sunuar ho? and i just took the time to explain to you that rice and sunuars are two different things what are you on and of course i was like a naive kid when they used to ask me this in school and like my grandfather always taught me i would proudly explain to them what sunuar is and they wouldn't even care like i would speak and they'd be like oh, okay and then forget it and then ask me the same question again which is pretty annoying it was very refreshing to me when i came to the u.s and i met this one very older gentleman who asked me my name and i was like my name is sujana sunwar and then he's like oh i know sunwar i am from ramichap and he spoke to me in sunwar language which is like really nice and that kind of really melted my heart uh, but yeah it's a big question like what is Sunuwar to a lot of people in Nepal and it's pretty annoying to be honest um, 
because everybody knows that one saying on varna don var pandav sunuar they say it and yet they have the audacity to ask me what snuar is um one thing i'd like to share with all the listeners who have had similar experiences like me uh, or who come from a community or have a name that's less heard of than and there are good chances that people are going to um spoil your name they either say it the wrong way they either write it the wrong way some do it on purpose some do it unknowingly and it is not okay if they mess up your name you make sure they correct it you make sure they say it the right way and write it the right way your name is your power and do not let other people mess with that that's all i'm going to say and a nepal's education system and society definitely needs to do better in identifying people who are not caste Thank you again to our listeners for sending us their stories. Um before I go, I'd like to share some really exciting news. Bodu Bodze is hosting um the first podcast festival of Nepal this coming month in April, supported by Splice Media. The festival All Ears is for podcast lovers, for podcasters, and we already have an amazing host of speakers lined up. So do keep your eyes open for regular updates. Um and yeah we'd like to thank all of our listeners if you also would like to share your experiences send us your stories you can do so by reaching out to us on our social media platforms um do follow us on twitter on instagram on facebook um and you can also write to us uh at info@bozobaze.org at and yeah thank you to all of our patrons once again and until next time bye